What's your name, age, and what do you do? My name is Devin Davis. I'm 26, and I'm an entrepreneur. I am Ricky. I'm 33. I'm an academic counselor in higher education. Okay, and why did you let your balloon go? You're very handsome. Um, I like your swag and everything, but um, baby, you said you're 26. I'm 33. It's a seven-year age difference. Age and number, no number. I know, but when you my niece age, no, nah, it is. It's, it's way, it's the number. 26, 33, that ain't really that big of an age gap. But you know what? I feel as though women that are in their 30s, like 33 and up, they looking for old heads. They looking for an old head that's ready to pay some bills. Matters. Yeah, most definitely. And even when it comes to, to the age, like, I feel like age is, it really is a number once you really get to know somebody. Because I know 40-year-olds that don't have the mindset that I have yet at 26. So I, I'm one of those believe that age is a number. And that's when I feel like you should got to really get to know somebody because sometimes you can talk to somebody that's your age, but you can meet somebody young, you're like, dang, this person is way more mature. So I understand, but I don't understand at the same time. But I respect it, though. You know what I love about the Pop the Balloon dating shows? It gives people the opportunity to be the main character that they always wanted to be. It shows you who people are when they have the power. That balloon holds some power. God, bro, I don't got nothing to do with you. She, bro, she tripped. Drop that bag. Drive off. Shut up. She let me fight. I don't got no gun on me. I don't got no gun. I don't got a gun. Bro, no. Drive. Can you please turn? Can you please turn? I don't have nothing to do with this. She, bro, she, it don't matter. She trying to give me his Bro, this gotta be a skit. Coming out and telling your girl you can't fight? That is diabolical. Ain't no man out here gonna look like a wimp in front of their girl. I don't care how sorry your hands are. You gonna fake the funk. I'ma tell you one thing. Sometimes y'all ladies be putting us in some very uncompromising situations. I'ma give you, I'ma tell y'all a story. I think this is when I had my Mustang. So this had to be when we lived in the city. This was before I got married. This was before my son was here. This was just me and my baby Danaya, okay? We used to watch boxing a lot. So we would go to restaurants and we would look at these fights. I'm not sure which fight it is. I know it was a Canelo fight. I think it was the Canelo versus Miguel Cotto fight. So this, I don't know, this 2016, 2015, somewhere around there. We go to this place called the U-Bar. In order to get in these places when they have these boxing events, you have to pay at the door and you can either stand up or you can pay for seating. I decided to pay for seating. Paid at the door, so it was 20 a person, so that's 40. And then I bought some seats. I think the seating was like another 50 or something to that extent or 100. I think it was like 100, bro. I'm not... I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, bought the seats. The whole time we're watching the fights, it's some ignorant motherfuckers coming in there. They standing in front of us. Mind you, we bought the seats, but they standing in front of us. So numerous times I had to, hey, y'all can't see the fight. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. All right, it's a few chicks and it's like two dudes or whatever. Eventually the fight is over. The same people is standing in our way to leave. They're not going nowhere because once the fight is over, the U-Bar turns into a whole shebang. You know what I'm saying? It's a club. So we trying to leave. Fight is over. They in our way. Danette takes it upon herself, bro, to start bum-rushing through the crowd. I feel as though she already felt some type of way about them because those were the same people that were standing in our way while we were trying to watch the fight. So with that added motivation... She started bum rushing through them. One of the chicks was like, Excuse me. The Ned turns around, dog, and says, Excuse you. Lord have mercy. When she did that, about six of them other bitches that we didn't know was with that motherfucker, their antennas rose. Then it was like another seven or eight. That was all together with them. Their antennas rose too. I had to think fast. Boy, I got the hell. I grabbed them and got the hell up out of there so quick. I got up out of there so quick, so swift. Jesus. You ever seen Dragon Ball Z when, when Goku did this shit right here? I walked away from a 12 year relationship with two kids. See, I've been together since I was 16 years old. 
You know, I had two children as a teenager. Having two kids as a teenager is crazy. I love my son to death, but I cannot imagine having my son at 17, 18 years old. It's so much life that you haven't experienced yet at 17, 18 years old. And that added responsibility is going to make it so much harder. Like, I don't know who I would be right now if I had my son at 17, 18 years old. But this is a prime example why you shouldn't be doing grown folks as a teenager. I still know it's a few of y'all that watch these videos religiously that aren't subscribed. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram and make sure you got the notification bell selected to all. That way you can get all the notifications when I upload these videos. Stop playing with me. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get right. And I can honestly say that as young adults raising two children, we did pretty okay. But about six years into the relationship, I began to feel stuck. While he was sticking to and accomplishing all of the goals that he had set for himself, I was feeling like my life was just becoming like a revolving door of mother and wife duties. And then the goals that I had for myself would come last. I would come up with all these plans on how we could, you know, relocate to California as a family. And he would entertain it, but he never spoke life into it. And when it all hit the fan... I walked away from everything. And you know what was the hardest? The judgment and criticism that I received, especially from people I thought would be in my corner. After leaving that relationship, an overflow of blessings and opportunities started to come my way. It has been an extremely long journey of healing. I didn't know who I was outside of being a mom and a wife. I am that too. But I'm also more than just that. Now, I am getting to know LeBritton. Some of y'all might try to crucify me for saying this, but I don't really believe in high school sweethearts. I'm going to be honest. Your woman needs at least two to three intakes before she knows that's what she really wants. Just like as a man, folk, you got to go to a few open houses before you settle on your dream home. I know a lot of y'all boys won't be able to hear what she's saying with an open heart. Because in y'all minds, she left her man to be a slut. <sighs> I understand where she's coming from. Sometimes what happens is we get in these relationships and we make mistakes and have kids too young. Even if we don't have kids, we just get in these relationships too young. We don't experience life. We don't know who we are. Because think about it. 16 years old, you're still in your parents' house. You have to follow their rules. you out your parents' house. And I'm thinking from a female's point of view, you're out your parents' house. Now you and your boyfriend, your baby's father, live together. In order to make a man happy, there's rules that you have to follow. You can't go out here and just be free. You have to take your man's feelings into consideration when you do certain things. So again, you go straight from your parents' house, your parents' rules, into another roof where you have to follow under a man's rules. I know what y'all gonna say. You make your bed, you lay in it. I understand that. But some people aren't built like that. Sometimes words sound a lot better than the actions that it takes to fulfill them. As long as those kids are being taken care of, as long as you didn't leave your man and put him on child support, and now you using him to fund your lifestyle, I support you. Medieval MMA. I guarantee you that everybody under those suits are of Caucasian descent. Y'all, y'all boys is fearless. Hey, somebody f in here with me. I'm up there doing this damn job. These folks want me to do all this walking in the dark. I'm not walking down there no mother dark. Hey. Hey. <laughs> no, coming the fuck out there, man. Somebody is down there with me. Somebody in here with me. When I got this job, I told them I don't do things like this. And I got my camera on, bitch. You can go if you just come out. I'll let you go free. But don't try to just pop out on me. You know what I'm saying? Skirt the out of me. Make me shit all on myself on the job. Come on now. Come on now, I'm just trying to get my goddamn hours and go home now. He don't act like he don't hear me. You know you back there, come on. I'm not suppose somebody had popped I'm out. I was scared the hell out of me. Overnight security? Yeah, I could have that. There's one thing I know for sure I can't do is be security. 
at nighttime. <laughs> Probably in the day. Then again, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. If I'm security in the day, the first time somebody steals some shit, I'm gonna get fired. Because I'm not finna chase you down. I am not finna chase you down, bro. When I used to work at the mall, they had them dudes, secret shoppers. Not even secret shop. What they? What you call them? Secret shoppers was the people that came and acted like they wanted to buy stuff, but they were secretly trying to figure out, you know, if your customer service was on point and whatever, whatever. So, no, it was... I don't know, bro. But basically, they had security in Macy's, but they looked like regular customers. If they f suspect that you was coming to steal something... They'll act like they're shopping, but they're, like, surveilling you. My people, it was one time. A mom decided he wanted to steal from Macy's. The secret shopper dude they had in there was some white dude that looked like he should have been on Baywatch. Mans hawked them down, caught them in the food court, picked them up, and slammed them in the table. I think Buddy Potty stole like two pairs of jeans. He almost broke this man's back for two pairs of jeans, but I could tell... The way he picked him up and slammed him, he been wanting to do that shit for years. He was itching to do that. You come steal at my store? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and call the police. Yeah. Uh, he wearing some Jabot jeans with some black Air Force Ones. All right, now. You want me to do what? Follow him? Hmm. All right. Yeah. They say whatever disease I got is contagious. <laughs> Sorry. Can I, um... <coughs> oh. I know. I'm married like hell, dog. But I call her like I see it. She got them yams. But have y'all noticed that anytime these people do these pranks, they do it at Walmart? Oh. Um. You good? Yeah, yeah. You need, you need help? No, I'm good. Right here at the, um... Looking at this perfume and stuff. Jimmy Choo. <coughs> <coughs> No, they said that whatever I got is contagious. And I need a mask or something. But, um, yeah. I'm gonna go buy me a box later. Um, girl, I don't know. I don't know. Some disease I got. I need a mask. They said I need to be wearing a mask. They said it's contagious or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know where the guy went? Uh, she's got oh, okay. <coughs> I know this video is about the prank, but I can't help but notice how how beautiful she is. And this leads me into I don't think us as black men really appreciate how beautiful black women are. I guess this is coming from a place of just seeing so many videos on the internet about men just, oh, I'd rather go to Brazil, or I'd rather go to Colombia, or I'd rather go to D I'd rather go to DR. I don't have a problem with you if you're doing that. I have a problem with men that are doing that, but trying to shit on black women. If you're from New York, bro, stop faking that accent, son. Where did my dad, like, y'all be dragging it, bro. Like, our accent is not that deep, bro. Like, I be dragging. I be putting mad fake ass emphasis in your in your word of my mother and all that. Like, bro, for me, stop talking like that, bro. Y'all sound retarded. It's not the fucking nineties with them fake ass Brooklyn nah, movies. Oh, 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 oh! I don't know, bro. Your accent sound fake. Is he is he trolling? His accent sound fake. This ain't the nineties. Ooh, I don't think you from New York for real. Stop. Please. When you meet people out in the South that are from New York and they know you from New York, they try to put on so hard. They be trying to put on so hard, bro. Get the pulling slangs out of nowhere. Like, what's good, son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good, my G? Like, chill. Let's have a civilized conversation. Feel me? I've been out here about 12 years. You've been out here about 30 years. We from Georgia now. It's over with. They don't even speak like that in New York no more. I be hearing these young speak. I don't even understand what they be saying. What am I dead? What the fuck is word to my dad? When we start talking like that? What's good, my heart? What's up, my heart? What is that? I be speaking on the phone with my cousins, and, and they be talking. They be like, you heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, fuck out of here. You heard? I'm like... Damn, we ain't never speak like this when I was growing up. And I ain't gonna try it. Because if I try it, I'm gonna sound funny as hell. 
You heard me? Like, you see what I'm saying? Me saying, that sound like I'm from New Orleans. Help me identify Karen and Karen Jr. here looking like Ric Flair and his mom. Whoa. They harassed a black man at Costco and kept ramming him with their cart because they say he cut and... Nah. Man said Ric Flair and I cannot unsee it. That is crazy. In front of them in line when in reality, he was in front of them the whole time. He just stepped away from his cart to grab another item from the shelf and they weren't having it. I said, pack the fuck off of me. You just hit me. Lady, you need to stop. You've been harassing him this whole time. Thank you. I I've been record recording you, ma'am. And then what? What are you talking what? Hey, turn around, dude. I wish. She's been harassing him this whole time. This part is really sad. You see, this Costco employee ran up to help the white ladies, but as soon as he realized they were the aggressors and the black man needed help, he just walks away. <gasps> I hope you're enjoying this. had a moment like this at Costco's but it wasn't with another customer it was actually with an employee so my pops is here now but my pops is asleep I, damn I wish I could wake him up to, to really like tell the story but to be quite honest with you I do understand where the employee was coming from but at the same time I understood where my father was coming from too so I'm gonna break it down to you we went to Costco we shopped and everything and then when it was time to pay for the groceries the guy did not want to he didn't want to check my father out because my father was using his wife's card which you know my pops didn't understand because he's been using the same card shit since i was like eight years old they've been doing the same thing since i was eight years old when i first moved out here to go to college we went to the same costco he did the same thing with the same card hey this is my wife's card but you know we're both members whatever whatever and he was able to check out this particular day, dog, this employee was not having it. And what really upset me was the way he was talking to my pops. And I know how I could get, so you know, I was I was ready to I was ready to turn up. And I think it was a black lady in there. She saw the whole interaction and she was just like she came over there and she tried to smooth the situation over. But I think the guy he held some type of rank in there. So he wasn't going. He wasn't going at all. And then after that, my pops ended up calling Costco. And Costco said that you guys are both members, so you can use that card. Even though it has her name on it, but you guys are married, so you can use that card. But he never, we never followed up. We never did nothing. He just called corporate to check. Corporate said, yes, you could use that card. And that was that. But yeah, you know, to this day, though, he, he, that, he out here now. And the Costco is literally 10 minutes away from our house. But he'd rather go all the way to 
BJ's, which is... He'd rather go to BJ's, and BJ's is in Sugarloaf. So Sugarloaf is about 35, 40 minutes away from where we live at. He'd rather do that before going to Costco, just because of that interaction. Knock on wood, I am thankful that I don't... I'm thankful that I've had limited Karen-type interactions. A situation like this, like the whole skipping line, and all that goofy shit, or somebody like hitting me with the cart, I wish a, I wish a Karen would. I honestly wish a Karen would. I wish you would hit me with the cart. All your shit is going to be on the floor.